Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, expressed the pride of the ministry and its employees for the care and attention they receive from His Majesty the King and the support and backing of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. During a meeting with the editors-in-chief of local newspapers and Bahrain News Agency, he affirmed that the ministry is working to implement the directives of the wise leadership, which stresses the necessity of making diplomatic efforts to achieve the higher interest of the country and the citizen, strengthening bonds of friendship and brotherhood with all the people of the world, deepening joint cooperation and bilateral coordination with brotherly and friendly countries, consolidating the principles of good neighborliness and enhancing mutual respect between countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs emphasized the need to support and strengthen joint Gulf action within the framework of the Cooperation Council. For all that is in the interest of the people of the GC states and the active role that the Council plays to maintain the security and stability of the GCC countries and the countries of the region, in cooperation with the allied and friendly countries, stressing the keenness of His Majesty the King to support the cohesion of the Cooperation Council for the Arab Gulf states, which is a cornerstone for maintaining the security and stability of the region. Minister Azayani indicated that the vision of His Majesty the King is for the Middle East to be a safe, stable and prosperous region, noting that among the most important pillars of the Kingdom of Bahrain's foreign policy is peace, sustainable development and human rights, adding that peace is a comprehensive strategic choice and Bahrain calls for it to premeditate all countries of the world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also touched on the implication of His Majesty's speech at the Jeddah Security and Development Summit, noting that His Majesty stressed the importance of stabilizing energy prices and the need to support the initiatives aimed at exporting grain and wheat and supporting exporting countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs said Bahrain is very satisfied that the path of exporting grains from Russia and Ukraine is proceeding towards its desired goals. In response to a question about the relationship with the state of Qatar, the Minister of Foreign Affairs explained that the Kingdom of Bahrain took the initiative several times to invite the brothers in Qatar to hold bilateral talks between the two sides to settle the outstanding issues between the two parties in implementation of what was stipulated in Al-Ula statement, stressing that the Kingdom has always called for dialogue and understanding and it wants the good for all and for stability, development and prosperity to prevail for all the people of the region. He expressed his regret that the state of Qatar has not responded to the calls made by the Kingdom of Bahrain so far at a time when the Kingdom seeks to achieve the interests of the two brotherly countries and people and the interests of the region in general, its stability and prosperity. He added that the Kingdom of Bahrain believes that it is not correct to leave the pending matters without taking any action regarding them. Therefore, the responsibility rests with the brothers in Qatar who did not respond to the repeated invitations addressed to them by the Kingdom, stressing that the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen on brotherly relations with Qatar and the door is still open for dialogue and understanding bilaterally according to al ula statement on all the outstanding issues that require research and treatment. Among them, for example, the issue of Bahraini fishermen, the importance of maritime coordination, aviation and other matters. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed appreciation for the response of the brothers in the state of Qatar to the decision of the Kingdom of Bahrain to allow the movement of all citizens of the GCC countries and entry to the Kingdom of Bahrain through all ports using the identity card or passport without any prior procedures. He added that the governments are responsible for coordinating more with each other to settle all outstanding issues and this is what Bahrain hopes and seeks and will still hope that Qatar will respond to the Kingdom's calls to settle contentious issues through dialogue and direct negotiations between the two sides. The Minister of Information Affairs, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, affirmed that the continued patronage the media sector enjoys from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is the main motive for intensifying work on developing the sector and encouraging initiatives that enhance creativity and innovation in it. Speaking while attending the concluding of the three-day Innovators Lab sessions, the Minister of Information Affairs said that investment in the Bahraini citizen is the goal of the efforts and implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who always affirms that the citizen is the center and basis of development and every government effort serves the citizen and develops his capabilities in all fields. 
The Minister of Information announced the Out of the Box Initiative as a new initiative that resulted from the Innovators Lab and aims to collect creative ideas for the media professionals working at the Ministry of Information to make influential visual content with the participation of all. He commended the great efforts made in preparing and organizing the Innovators Lab to exchange experiences and develop the media work, wishing all every success. Under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Kingdom of Bahrain will organize the Manama Health Conference and Exhibition during the period from the 10th to the 13th of December 2022 in cooperation with the Arab Republic of Egypt. An agreement was signed to organize the joint conference between the National Health Regulatory Authority and Education Plus in the presence of the NHRA CEO Dr. Maryam Azbi Al Jalahma and the Ambassador of the Arab Republic of Egypt to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Ambassador Yasser Shaban. The two companies will organize the conference which is being held for the first time and shall witness many medical themes and conferences in various fields. Dr. Al Jalahma underscored that the conference will present the most important scientific developments in the fields of medical devices and pharmacy, which translates the directives of His Majesty the King in regard to further develop the medical sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain with the backing of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She also noted that the conference shall be an ideal opportunity to exchange experiences between hospitals and to seek important agreements and investments between the two countries. For his part, the Egyptian ambassador to the kingdom stressed that the conference will constitute an important turning point in the medical aspect between the two brotherly countries and will contribute to the exchange of knowledge and experiences in addition to having a positive impact on the medical sector in both countries. The Director General of the General Traffic Department, Brigadier General Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Abdul Wahab Al Khalifa, affirmed that the department has intensified its traffic presence in all the roads surrounding the Matam buildings, in which the Ashura commemoration is held that contribute to a smooth flow of movement and the safety of participants and all road users. These efforts are based on the directives of the Cabinet, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to provide a safe environment and facilitating all the needs and requirements in a manner that contributes to the success of the Ashura season. The Director General of the General Traffic Department called for the need to adhere to traffic rules and regulations to abide by diversions if necessary and to cross from designated places with the need to cooperate with available traffic officers. The Ministry of Health has announced that the pre-registration for the voluntary monkeypox vaccine is now open. Citizens and residents can register through the website healthalert.gov.bh or by calling the 24 by 7 hotline number 444. The Ministry of Health highlighted that the Kingdom of Bahrain has secured a limited stock of the vaccine which will be administered to priority groups as per the set health protocols, including frontline health workers and those at high risk of exposure. The Ministry also explained that upcoming shipments will be dedicated to citizens and residents who wish to take the vaccine, noting that it will be free of charge. The Ministry has put in place relevant protocols related to testing, isolation and treatment based on the Global World Health Organization recommendations and standards. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila bin Sayyid Jawad, issued Edict 28 of 2022 regarding isolation protocols for those who contract the virus and those suspected of being in contact with a positive case. The edict stipulates that the medical isolation period is for 21 days from the day of the confirmed result or from the day of contact with a positive case. Saudi Arabia reported a revenue of more than $98.4 billion in the second quarter of 2022, according to the Ministry of Finance. The country's oil revenues topped at $66.5 billion in the second quarter. The kingdom also reported an expenditure of more than $77.7 billion during the same period. Non-oil revenues amounted to $31.9 billion in the second quarter, in addition to $2.7 billion in income tax profits and capital gains. Another $17 billion was earned through tax revenues on goods and services and $5 billion through other taxes. Kuwait, Oman and the United Arab Emirates have welcomed the United Nations announcement of a ceasefire extension in Yemen for another two months. 
The UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grundenberg, announced another extension of the fragile ceasefire between the warring parties on Tuesday, pledging to ramp up the talks for an expanded ceasefire agreement. He said the truth extension includes a commitment from the parties to intensify negotiations to reach an expanded ceasefire agreement as soon as possible. This week, U.S. President Joe Biden also welcomed the agreement and also thanked Saudi Arabia and Oman for their mediation roles. A new video game sensation that features an adventurous feline is resonating with cat lovers. Now, some of them are using the game titled Stray to raise money for real stray cats. Cat lovers are particularly particularly liking it, so much so that some of them are using the game to raise money for the real cats. Thanks to online funding platforms, stray gamers stream live to fundraise for animal shelters and other cat-related charities. Viewers watch as players navigate the adventurous feline through an aging industrial landscape, doing normal cat stuff to solve puzzles and evade enemies. About 80% of the game's development team are cat owners as well as cat lovers. A real-life orange cat named Martau, a developer's pet, helped inspire the game. 